The information in this video is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose or treat any specific medical condition. Use of this information is not a substitute for advice from your physician or therapist. Hi, I'm Dr. Rob. After 25 years of musculoskeletal medicine, I've noticed that the most common reason for musculoskeletal pain is some form of muscle imbalance and muscle fatigue, usually due to an imbalance in our kinetic chain. What is the kinetic chain? Kinetic chain is a neurologically coordinated, pre-programmed movement pattern of particular muscles, joints, and fascia. And I want to focus on fascia particularly for this talk. Fascia is a complex network of connective tissue that acts like a scaffolding around our muscles and joints that helps with these pre-programmed movements. Furthermore, since our body initiates movements from our spine and moves outward, the fascia helps transmit the forces being generated from our spine through our arms and our legs to our hands and feet so that we can have maximum force with the least amount of effort. Good, healthy fascia means good, efficient movement. There have been three fascial kinetic chain patterns that have been clearly identified through anatomical studies. Now, I think as we progress through science, we're gonna identify more of them, but we're gonna talk about these three. Now, these three patterns, even though we talk about them individually, they actually work together in a coordinated pattern governed by our nervous system. And it's our nervous system that decides what movements use which of these kinetic chain patterns in which order. However, all three of these fascial kinetic chain patterns are critical in our everyday movements. So here's an illustration of a human. Diaphragm right here, because the diaphragm is involved and critical in these three kinetic chain movements. So the first one is the anterior functional line. And it starts here comes down here, and then it's on this side, goes down there. These are the fascial bands that interdigitate and cover these particular muscles and joints to allow for a movement pattern along this line. So for the posterior chain, you have the posterior functional line, which actually comes down here and then crosses into the hips. Starts up here, this one crosses down into the hips. So this is the posterior functional line. Then we have the third one, the superficial posterior chain, which starts here. I'm just gonna put it on the side of the spine to make it easier to see. And it goes down the spine. And then when it hits the sacrum, it splits off to go down the leg. And I'll do it on this side too, just to represent how it envelops the spine, goes down the leg. This posterior fascial line is actually easy to identify. You can do it for yourself. Get a friend and have them lay on the couch, on the bed, on the floor, and cup your hand underneath their skull with your fingertips right where the skull meets the neck. Let their head relax, and then have them alternate one foot movement and another foot movement, and they'll eventually feel a tightness underneath their fingers, which is next to your skull. So that's the movement of the uh, superficial posterior chain. So here's an illustration of the posterior chains from a side view. You have right here your anterior fascial band that the muscles collectively want to pull you forward. And then your posterior chain, which these muscles collectively want to pull you backwards. So, so when I stand here, even though I'm just resting here, this position is a reflection of the dynamic tension between the anterior fascial lines that want to pull me forward along with gravity, as well as the posterior uh, fascial lines that are pulling me backwards to keep me upright. So consequently, just sitting here, the fascial bands are influencing my breathing, my posture, and my balance. Now all this is important because if we move forward, we need the anterior fascial lines to initiate forward movement. But then we need the posterior chain lines to prevent us from falling forward too fast to keep, so we can stay upright, as well as to pull our muscles back so that they're ready for the next movement. So the anterior lines and posterior lines are constantly working together in order to allow us to do uh, most of our everyday movements. So what causes these kinetic chains not to work well? well poor posture, um, injuries, trauma, 
uh, repetitive movements along one fascia line without balancing on the others, uh, some type of arthritis, age-related changes. There are a lot of things that can change the fascial patterns and a lot of things collectively that do that. So there's never really a singular thing that does it, usually a collection of, of uh, multiple things that occur. But one of the big problems is gravity. So gravity is quite a big force that tends to pull us forward, particularly because the way our spine is shaped and the force generated by the anterior fascial lines, it's actually easy to be bent forward. So these posterior chain lines are of particular importance for us to be strengthening and mobilizing, and it's important for us to be stretching and mobilizing the anterior lines so that there's a much better uh, uh, efficiency for posture maintaining, for deep breathing, and so we can maintain our balance.